welcome back to Cindy's Library, and today I'm going to talk about how Victober went. So, let's get to it. Let's see, I have my Victober list here of all of the uh, challenges. So, the group read was The Mayor of Casterbridge by Thomas Hardy. And after reading this, I can say I now have some understanding of why so many people like Thomas Hardy. He truly is a great writer. He's also uh, uh, The Mayor of Casterbridge is a rather sad story. In the very first chapter, our main character comes to this town looking for work. Uh, he ends up getting drunk and selling his wife and baby daughter to a total stranger. And, well, indeed, he does regret this the next day and spend much time and energy looking for them. It is to no avail. Uh, 18 years later, something like that, 20 years later, he ends up being the mayor of this town. And who should he encounter again but his wife and his now nearly grown up daughter? And what happens after that? I don't mind tragic per se, but there really wasn't a lot of hope at the end of the story. So, I'll freely admit it was great, and I probably won't read it again. But I am glad that I read it. So, what else did I do? Well, I also read all the poetry in this collection by Gerard, Gerard Manley Hopkins. So, lots of essays and such things it appears but i just focused on the poems he has a very interesting meter um, he starts out more traditionally lots of sonnets but uh, he ends up uh, going his own direction and it's probably partly because I don't know enough about poetry to appreciate exactly what he is doing. I even read the preface he has to his poetry here, but didn't help me that much, I'm afraid. Still, he does have some beautiful lines in here. Uh, the world is charged with the grandeur of God. Uh, Christ minds, Christ's interest, what to a valor amend. Their eyes them heart wants, care haunts, but follows kind. Their ransom, their rescue, and first, fast, last friend. And, of course, maybe rather cliche, but pied beauty. Glory be to God for dappled things, for skies of couple colored as a brindled cow, for rose, moles, gnaws, dipple, pond, trout that swim, fresh fire coal, chestnut falls, finches' wings, landscape plotted and pieced, bold fallow and plow, and all trades their gear and tackle and trim, all things counter original spare, strange. Whatever is fickle, freckled, who knows how, with swift, slow, sweet, sour, dazzle, dim, he fathers forth whose beauty is past change. Praise him. So, there are a few things I got out of it, so I'm glad I've read him. I'm interested to read his prose and see what I think of that. But, well, perhaps not the most successful. 
Next time we have a challenge like that, maybe I should try Christina Rossetti. I suspect I may understand her a bit better. Let's see. Short stories. Well, I did two sets of short stories. First, I read or rather listened to all of George Eliot's Scenes of Clerical Life. And that is indeed what we do have here. We have three stories in here. And each and all are about clergy in some way. In the first one, uh, The Sad Fortunes of the Reverend Amos Bartron, uh, we get a sad story there about a cleric who has lots of unfortunate bad luck in his life. Um, Mr. Gilfill's love story is about a cleric who loves a rich young lady, but she doesn't love him back. She's in love. Oh, wait, no. She is the ward of a rich gentleman, and this cleric was rather the protege of this gentleman. That's right. But she loves a rich young gentleman. And yeah, we also have Janet's repentance. Poor Janet, she has a difficult life and there's a cleric that helps her with it. All three of these stories have a tragic element in them too. And yet, aside from possibly the first one they have, it just ended up more hopeful for me somehow. I especially liked Janet's repentance. That was an especially good one. So there is that. And let's see, what else? Read and watch an adaptation. I'm afraid I didn't watch any adaptations. <laughs> oh, we have been rather distracted by the first seven seasons of the Great British Bake Off and have been having a great time with that. Although there actually is a Victober connection because at least in the first couple seasons, in the middle of challenges, they would take a break and talk about some of the history of like pies or certain kinds of cake or bread that you bought, things like that. Some of them go back to medieval times, of course, or at least the Tudors, but some of them had their origins in Victorian times. Not surprising because apparently Queen Victoria did love her desserts. Can't say that I blame her. So there is that. So, uh, coming of age story. Well, I was planning on David Copperfield. I think I didn't get past the first chapter though, I'm afraid. However, I did read The Heir of Redcliffe. Um, that was for a different challenge, but one could say it is a coming of age story as well. I also finished Bleak House this month. And this may not exactly be a traditional coming of age story, but at the beginning of the story, we see Louisa and her brother, Tom, the education they are given and what that's like. And we end up seeing how that education affects how they turn out maybe five, 10 years in the future when they're adults. So Bleak House, that was a wonderful read. And I can see why it is suggested that you read Charles Dickens like you're reading a fairy tale. That makes perfect sense now. But Bleak House, it basically has two main threads. 
One thread is the education thread with Mr. Uh, Grand Grime and uh, Mr. B. Not Boucher. With various ideas about education and filling young minds with facts and only facts and stifling the imagination. And we watched that effect on Mr. Grad Grimes' two children, in particular, Louisa and Tom. Also, interestingly enough, how it does not affect the circus girl that he takes in, uh, Cece or Cecilia, in the same way. And there are definite reasons for that. Um, the other strand is with Stephen Black, and uh, he is a worker at one of Mr. B's factories, but he is the type of person to slip through the cracks. He has all sorts of troubles, and only his neighbor, Rebecca, to help them. And of course, by the end, all of these threads uh, cross together and then untangle, and it is a wonderful thing. Quite enjoyed it. Need to start reading more Dickens. So I am anxious to get David Copperfield, but it may be a bit. But back to the next challenge. That was read a book with a chronic illness or a disability. And the era of Redcliffe has this. You can also say it's a coming of age story, coming of age of Guy Morville. He, uh, his parents both died. Long story about that. He is heir to Redcliffe. And the Morvilles are known for their temper. And his grandfather has raised him to uh, try to keep a tap on his temper. And his grandfather told him all of the Morville history before he died. Then he is under the guardianship of uh, Mr. Edmundstone. Ed Mr. Edmundstone is a kind gentleman, but he's rather uh, not the most firm unless he gets roused. And he has four, some daughters and a son in particular. But going back to Guy, we see uh, the first time he goes to the Edmundstone's house and see how he grows and develops from that. Mm. But Mr. Edmundson, like I said, he has some daughters who, of course, complicate the plot. Um, he also has a nephew who is extremely highly regarded, and he doesn't like Guy at all, which complicates things. But he also has a son, Charles. I'm not exactly sure what kind of a disease he has, but whatever it is, it makes it extremely difficult for him to walk. Sometimes he has spells where something's happening and it's very painful for him. This was an interesting portrayal because at first, Charles, he seems to be quite bright. He's the only one who really will challenge Philip on his opinions. But uh, aside from how he feels with his um, illness sometimes, uh, health-wise, I mean, and aside from his lack of mobility, which he finds very discouraging since he can't do the things that normal young men would do, he's also frankly quite bored because he has a great mind. But I do like his arc in this book because 
he discovers ways uh, to make something of his life in spite of his limitations, find something to do with himself and to help others. And I, I can definitely appreciate that. Oh, I also started The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. I'm about maybe a fifth of the way through, I think, so I still have a ways to go. I'm listening to this one, but enjoying it so far. I've just finished um, I have just finished, uh, what's his first name? Mr. Hartwright's first section. So we'll have to see where this goes. But so far, there has been a lot of mystery, indeed, about a woman dressed in white that Mr. Hartwright meets in the first chapter. And we have untangled some of it, but there's a lot left to untangle, which makes sense. There's a lot left to the book, too. So, now let's see. What else did I read? Oh, yes. I read The Cantervale Ghost on Halloween. That one is by Oscar Wilde and is quite hilarious. You have this English estate in the countryside that no one wants to live in because it's haunted by a ghost. Yes, really. But when an American, I think he's an ambassador, and his family move in, well, first, they don't believe in ghosts. So the ghost has a lot of trouble trying to convince them that he's even real. And second, even once he does convince them of that fact, <laughs> oh, they do not react the way he expects or wants. I mean, uh, the father of the house, he comes up to the ghost and gives him some oil for his chains so they won't clank and rattle so much. And the mother wants to give him medicine so he won't moan so. And the little twin boys, ah, he is their new favorite thing to torment. So the ending is very Victorian. And yet I can't really argue with it. So there is that. Um. Oh, I read Village Diary by Miss Reed. That is the second book in the Green Acre series. Last time we went through a school year. This time we start January 1st and go through a whole year. Uh, basically, I forget whether it's one of the students or a friend gives Miss Reed a diary, then they want her to keep it for the whole year. So, for this book, we shift from third person to first person, and it works quite well. Quite enjoyed it. I also uh, reread, or I guess I should say re listened to Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. Ah, it is a favorite. Might not have the best romances, I'll admit that. But love the sister interaction between the more sensible Eleanor and the more uh, romantic and full of sensibility Marianne. Although it isn't exactly uh, that Eleanor has no 
sensibility, and it isn't that Marianne doesn't have any sense. Exactly. But, of course, by the end, they both, uh, well, they're not exactly the same people they were at the beginning, and they're probably stronger for that. Love, love, love that one. And I also read Her Quiet Revelation by Marianne Monson. Now, this one is about... Oh, her first name is... Ah. Her last name, I know, is Cannon, her last married name. Anyway, she was an amazing woman, and this is a historical novel based on her life. Uh, one of the pioneers that came to the Salt Lake Valley. And she was one of the first women to be sent back east to study for, to study at a university to become a full doctor. She got three university degrees, which is quite amazing for the time. She was a polygamous wife to a brother of uh, George Q. Cannon, which complicated things greatly. She also ended up running for the state senate and ended up beating out her husband. Uh, not sure what they would have called him at the time since they weren't supposed to be in a relationship anymore after the manifesto, but in any case, she beat her husband in that race, which is absolutely hilarious. She seems to have been quite an amazing lady. Uh, working at a print office as a teen to pay her way to high school and college before she was sent back east to become a doctor. She ended up having three children. <sighs> she certainly sounds like quite the person and led quite an amazing life. Anyway, I do believe that is everything that I read for the month of October. So didn't quite do all the Victober challenges, but I did most of them, even if I didn't get to everything that I was planning to. And I had a great time. Really loved The Heir of Radcliffe, so I'm glad I read that one. Anyway, I think that's everything for here. So, thank you so much for stopping by. I'd love to hear how your Booktober went and hearing wonderful things on Booktube from other participants. And uh, until next time, I hope we all stay safe and healthy, and as always, happy reading!